Okay, one of the really basic things way back, polishing a piece of shafting. When you're polishing a shaft, of course, uh, people get here years ago and you wanna hang on to it. And I've seen people do this and they say they're stronger than the uh, abrasive. And generally you are, but it's dangerous, especially with gloves. I don't like it at all. I don't like another procedure that uh, I've seen people do and was told to me in school that it was okay when we first started out. It's many years ago. It's a holdover from the flat belt days. In the flat belt days, you'd do anything that you could to save time and save not disconnecting the power because you had to reach up on the flat belt and a stick of wood and disconnect your power. We have other ways to stop our lathe. What people would do many times is they would test the smoothness of the part as you're polishing it to see how smooth it was by touching it with your hand. I say don't touch it at all. Uh, early on, doing that procedure as prescribed by old timers, um, I had my hand with no gloves, nothing, just start to pull in a little bit. And if you fought against it as it starts wrapping around, the lathe's still gonna take you in. What I did was of course pushed away from the shaft and it didn't give any more friction. So there's a serious concern there and that's where a lot of the thought on uh, gloves comes from. Now, another thing, as you're doing this type of polishing, you're going to want to expose new, new grit on your belt. It's gonna be going fairly quick, so you wanna move it. And as you're going, because you want high speed so that you can start polishing on it. We wanna turn this on up on this machine here. Uh, I'd probably go at 1250. We won't go at 1600 because that chuck is kind of big and the chuck will not be happy if we do that. Polishing on a lathe, you want to wipe your ways down. There's going to be grit there. Um, also, you can use Scotch Brite. Again, this is more hazardous. I um, keep the contact down so that it can go away from you. Another thing that's been used is a lot of times you'll use just any old rag and you put the rag around there. And you're going for real polishing, you use some buffing compound. And you can do this, but again, hold it, don't let it get next to the chuck. Hold it so that it will go away. Don't get up here close with it ever. Leave yourself some room so that it can go away. But here is my really favorite for polishing. And we actually can turn the spindle slow. I built back in 1987. Um, but you can buy ones already pre-built electric motor, a little bit smaller than this. This takes a 108 inch belt on up to, I forget, pretty good sizes. The normal Goodson there. Uh, what you look for is under crankshaft polishers. Goodson is the most common name that makes them and they have a little electric motor. You can see how much quicker that just in no time. Didn't polish everything up, but it did a nice job for a short amount of time. Uh, as long as we're going through stuff, let's just go ahead and go to another one here. We'll grab out a file. And talking about files is something we should do on a whole nother issue, but filing on a leg. Now again, you don't want to go faster than the speed that the tool itself, the file, which is not as good as high speed steel, what it will take. So you're going to do it at a low speed. Also, you have to be really, really conscious that you stay away from the rotating stuff. It's tough to do. Also, there's a force coming back from your part trying to push, or push towards you if you're doing it like this. So make sure if you're doing this that you have a handle on it. Make sure that you are away from things. 
uh, it's one of those procedures that is done in this type of work, but you try to avoid doing it. That's the best. Um, but when you do, you've got to go that extra mile to think, keep your arch away from it. You're going to end up wanting to wear long sleeve shirts around a lot of this stuff because the chips flying at you, the sparks, um, it's not realistic to come out here naked and think that you're just going to not get wrapped up in the machine. Now, another way that this is done, and back when I ran turret lathes years ago, what we would do, we just cut the tang off of this. Some people do that anyway. Just cut it off instead of having to have a handle. But again, you don't use it this way. You're using it just for a quick deburring and you use it so it goes away from you. Really common, you'll use triangular files in that situation where you've got some snap ring grooves and things that you're trying to, and you can come in here, it'll get both sides of the snap ring groove. And yes, a tool, as you will see programmed a lot of times on a CNC, coming in making a nice little 45 will do it um, with less manpower but it actually slows down the CNC progress so much that a lot of times you can beat them on a turret lathe by uh, making your part and doing your deburring with a file. You can actually time-wise beat it with a manual machine. I don't have a turret lathe right now. I got rid of my two turret lathes I had here when I got the CNC lathe. And uh, so that's handwork files safety there. We might as well go into files a little bit too. A file is basically a series of chisels, little chisels across here. You can do some really precision work with a file as far as flat if you have a good file. When you use your file, uh, you want to go forward, make a cut, and as you can see that actually did cut the steel relatively quickly even though this is a dull old file. Um, and then pick it up. And you pick it up for two reasons. One is if you drag backwards across this, you will be dulling each of these little file cutting surfaces. Two, if you don't pick it up in situations where you're uh, filing on a lot of surface, the chips can't fall out. Now, when you get a lot of chips in here, you come along with either a pin card for files, which is specifically a, a really stiff, short little wire brush meant for taking out the pinnings. Pinnings are the pieces that get stuck in the file. Or you can just use a wire brush a lot of times. Um, and then you, you, you use a regular nylon brush after that. But another thing you can do, and I do this a lot when, if I am filing on a lathe, is, and I'm not going to have this turned on because I don't want to think about it and the camera both at the same time. You're filing along here and you make a stroke. I turn the file over it gives it another chance to fall out a little bit more. It doesn't clean out all the pinnings, but it helps a little bit. Now, my secret weapon. I'll go over here. Not too many shops have these. I wanted some of these many, many years ago. And that's not where I put them. Here's where I put them. And I wanted them, and they were just too expensive. No one would buy them. It is a carbide tooth file. It's not, they don't make them as big as the other ones, but it's amazing. In fact, I used this a little while back when we had a defect on the road in one of our trucks. Um, I guess that was a couple years ago now, but we filed the bearing off. After we split it, part of the bearing had welded to the spindle and we actually filed the bearing down so that we could put new bearings on. And it does two things. One, it's very aggressive on standard steel. And two, it will file hard material. Um, don't drag these back. Be, be careful with them. I don't know what the current price is on these. I give you a guess of 300 bucks for a file, which they actually came down when I first saw a price on these. They were like $600. And I tried to get the business I was working for to buy me one because I just wanted one for the shop. Since I'm buying my own, I bought these surplus. I actually bought a whole bunch of them for under 50 bucks a piece. And uh, we're still going to cover them like they're worth 600 each. 